Welcome to Black Mesa, Oklahoma's highest point. Black Mesa is located in the western edge of the Oklahoma Panhandle along the tri-state border with Colorado and New Mexico. It was a six-hour drive from Oklahoma City to Black Mesa. Upon arrival, we ate a picnic lunch at the bottom of the trail before beginning our hike to the summit. Get off me, bug. Hey. Black Mesa was the last stop on our quest to visit all 34 Oklahoma State Parks. Hiking up Black Mesa. Which one is Black Mesa? This one? Yeah. Okay. It is recommended that you allow at least four to five hours for the hike to the top and back. It is a 4.2 mile trek one way. Make sure you take plenty of water and a snack. Tired? A little bit. No. Up and away. Luckily, if you need a break, there is a bench at every mile point. This barren landscape can be deceivingly hot. It was around 80 degrees when we started our hike. As we got closer to the top, temperatures were well over 90 and the heat began to sneak up on us. A little. There's Hope Piercy up there. River learned the hard way that you shouldn't touch every new thing you see. Finally, we made it to the top. Time for a family photo. Black Mesa is the highest point in Oklahoma at 4,973 feet above sea level. It was given its name for the layer of black lava rock that covers it. Did you know that Cimarron County is the only county out of America's 3,070 counties that touches four states? Eventually, Black Mesa will be eroded into a butte. Buttes are also hills with vertical sides and a flat top, but buttes are smaller than mesas. Most people are confused about the difference between a butte and a mesa. I am a retired geography teacher, so let me try to clear that up. A good rule of thumb is that a mesa has a top that is wider than its height, while a butte has a top that is more narrow than its height. The green is the blue. Box that river wasn't smart enough. To, or I mean, the case wasn't smart to open, but we signed it. Here, give me that rock. We found the hiding rock. Where are you going to rehide it, River? Either in the box or like on the side of it right here. Oh no, no, we're hard. Here. Will anybody ever find that? They better. It'd be like arrowhead hunting, only you can keep that one. Pretty cool little box though. Sign in, and someone even left their card from Tamara in uh, Green Greenland. Tamara Greenland. Let's go, yeah. His holy church and the immaculate faith. Here, give me the pin back. They say this is technically part of the Rocky Mountains, but you can see some real bigger mountains starting over there in Colorado. Not many places in Oklahoma you can see mountains like that. It's 31 miles due south to Texas. It's only 1,200 feet due west to New Mexico. 4.7 uh, miles north to Colorado. 53 miles northeast, east northeast, to Kansas state line, or east, east northeast to Kansas, New York City, 
Yeah, you. Going back down. Huh? Little buttes everywhere. Uh huh. Cute little buttes. While visiting Black Mesa, you may catch a glimpse of some of the wildlife that calls this place home. Wildlife in the area includes golden eagles, quail, black bear, bobcat, mountain lion, mule deer, bighorn sheep, antelope, and horny toads. Does anyone know what kind of crane this is? We were having a disagreement in the car. It appeared to have a yellowish orange breast. Oh, he's running. He done scared him now. They're running into the dust storm. Hello, Frogmorn. Where are they looking at us? Oklahoma, where the deer and the antelope play. Don't. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Why is that one like so limpy? Oh, he made it. Go ahead. Camping is available 15 miles from the summit at Black Mesa State Park on Lake Carl Letling. The park offers RV campsites that can be reserved online with water and electric hookups. They also have tent campsites, picnic facilities, boat ramps, a playground, and restrooms with showers. We stayed at the Great Plains Bunkhouse, however, in the Dust Bowl Room. How appropriate. I believe Miley found this place on Airbnb. We really liked it. And something cool happened while taking these pictures. We stumbled across a big old snake. Who's gonna catch it? Are, are you sure it's a corn snake? Cause I'm not real sure. You don't throw me. Don't throw it at me. You don't. No. Crazy. Yeah. Don't hurt it. What a cute little guy. The next day, we drove a few miles to the Tri-State Marker. It is a neat thing to do while in the area. And we happened to cross paths with a few mule deer along the way. The Tri-State Marker denotes the boundaries of Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Colorado. This monument is located in the northwest corner of the Oklahoma Panhandle. It is at the north end of the Cimarron Meridian, which defines the boundary between the Oklahoma Panhandle and New Mexico. Hmm. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm in Colorado. And now, New Mexico. Another neat thing you can do while near Black Mesa is visit the famous dinosaur tracks. They are preserved in a sandstone strata next to Carrizo Creek. The dinosaur trackway was discovered in the 1980s. The exact species that left these footprints is unknown, although scientists believe the tracks came from a theropod, which is a classification for bipedal carnivores including the Tyrannosaurus rex. 
We spent the evening enjoying Lake Carl Letling and its five miles of shoreline. They say it is good for trout, small and largemouth bass, flathead, and walleye. We didn't break out the rods this time, though. It may be a country thing, but there's nothing like an Oklahoma sunset in the summertime. There's just something in the orange about watching the sun sink down over the water. After leaving Black Mesa, we stopped at Beaver Dunes Park, formerly Beaver Dunes State Park, until 2011 when ownership was transferred to the city of Beaver. This park is fairly similar to Little Sahara, just on a smaller scale. Beaver is said to be no man's land but everyone's town. There have been reports of strange occurrences at the dunes dating back to Spanish explorers. Coronado logged in his journal that three of his men disappeared into flashes of green light while exploring this tract of land. There are also rumors of this being a UFO crash site. It has been compared to the Bermuda Triangle and is sometimes referred to as Shaman's Portal. We took a long, hot, dry hike through the dunes on the nature trail while we let the boys do some fishing. Luckily, we all found our way out and the only thing that got abducted was this snake. Okay, stand up here and let me take your picture. Okay. Let it bite you. The beaver dunes are definitely worth a stop if you are visiting the panhandle. We took a different route home and we happened to pass by Canadian, Texas. The town gets its name from the main river we noodle. Canadian, Texas is sometimes referred to as the oasis of the high plains. It was really cool to see the river this far upstream. Early immigrants used this river as a navigational aid. They followed its southern bank to get as far as Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Canadian River Wagon Bridge was an impressive piece of architecture and engineering work. Upon its completion in 1916, it was said to be the largest steel structure west of the Mississippi. The bridge is 3,225 feet in length, making it the longest pin-connected bridge in Texas. The bridge was shared by Model T's and covered wagons until the 1950s when it was considered too narrow to safely carry passing traffic, and a new bridge was built. In the year 2000, after five years of restoration, it was reopened as a part of a scenic hiking and biking trail over the Canadian River. Go. Jace was feeling squirrely. He thought that because he was a college athlete now, he would finally be able to beat his dad in a foot race. Nope, wrong again. I took him up on the challenge and we made great use of the pedestrian bridge. Dad by a mile. We made one last stop at Quartz Mountain State Park on the way home. This was a revisit. We have been here once before. And as always, just like last time, River was busy trying to cheat and I was busy kicking all their butts. It was a fun finish to our trip. As I mentioned earlier, Black Mesa was our last state park. We collected a sticker or stamp from each park to put in our Oklahoma State Park Adventure Passport book. After every six parks, we would have a ranger sign the sheet in the back of the book and we would receive a token. We received our sixth and final token this December. What a journey. We have been visiting state parks consistently since 2017. We wish we would have videoed all of our adventures. I think we are going to run it back and make a YouTube video for each state park. If that is something you would watch or like to see, please leave a comment to let us know. Please click the bell and turn on all notifications for our channel so you don't miss out on our next adventure. Thanks for watching. The Williams family would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We'll see you guys next time.